Hey, I'm back. It's been a while, huh? Today I'm going to give you a rundown of my workflow inside Blender and Substance Painter. And overall, show you my process of making realistic assets, particularly the one that you're seeing on the screen right now. So with that said, enjoy. The first step, measuring. Whenever I try to remake something in 3D, I'll check if there is any information about the dimensions of the thing that I'm trying to create. Even better, a blueprint. But if our subject doesn't have a name or isn't a particular model, like this piece of junk of mine, in that case, you have to measure it yourself. Before starting this project, I bought one of these measuring tapes, which really made things a whole lot easier than having to eyeball everything. So yeah, buy one if you can. After measuring, I went and rewrote all my measurements in Photoshop. I then pasted it inside of my pure of canvas and started modeling. I often like to start modeling from the bottom because they are usually the biggest and easiest parts to model and are good for warming up before getting into more complex shapes. After I was done with modeling, I started UV unwrapping my models. I tried to be as efficient as I can with my texel density by categorizing UV maps in terms of the scale, visibility, and level of detail. For example, the small parts like these don't need to allocate a whole independent UV map for each of themselves. So, we can just put them all together in a single UV map. But, big parts are obviously more visible, so we need more resolution for them. That's why we tend not to make them share UV space with other objects. Instead, we dedicate a whole UV map to them. And no, there aren't any UDIMs involved. After the unwrapping step, I finally reach my favorite part, texturing, where I will export my models and texture them inside of my texturing software of choice, Substance Painter. Before starting this project, I didn't only take measurements, but also took several photos from different angles of the fan. While texturing, I paid close attention to my references and tried to add as much detail as I can. And here's a rule of thumb for adding detail. Try adding things that would surprise the audience and kind of make them go like Oh my god they added that? Oh my god they added that? Now you may ask how I created these borders around everything. I created them by using a high generator inside Blender. I'm pretty sure that you can set up one yourself but I was lazy so I just downloaded one from Artist Station. Then I just opened the project file and imported the models that I wanted to generate a height map from. I then imported my generated height maps into Substance Painter as an alpha. Then I used them as a stencil to mess where I want to have height and where I don't want to have height. I then used that same mask as an anchor point to tell Painter that where I want my metallic material to appear. And as for these patterns, I made them using Photoshop. And finally, we get to render this thing out, but uh-uh, we still have to set up our scene. Let's just start with lighting. I use a single HRI from Polyheaven to light this scene. When you're trying to replicate a photo, always pay attention to the direction of the light. For example, here it's coming from the left, so we rotate the HRI till it matches the direction that we want. And at this point, you might have realized that the angle of my camera inside Blender matches the angle inside the reference photo almost perfectly. That's because I use a tool called FSPy. All you have to do is to import the image that you want, then move these arrow points around, and when it's good to go, just export the camera from FSPy into Blender. Easy as that. I didn't want to go through details because this is not a tutorial, but I suggest you to watch this video if you're interested. As for the background, I took a photo without the fan as a clean plate. We then camera project it on a roughly modeled plane. If you want to know how to camera project, I'll link the video in the description. 
and you may feel like this whole thing is cheating, but remember, we're using 3D, which is basically cheating itself. And if that's not the case, then what about VFX? As a cherry on top, I added some dust particles as well as this single hair strand, which was a little, but added a lot of realism to the render. Now that everything is set up, we are finally ready to render this thing out. I rendered this scene with Octane in the resolution of 4032 by 2268 pixels, using 2048 samples. I'm pretty sure that at this point, we all know how impactful compositing is. That's why you should always take it seriously. My compositing process inside After Effects was pretty straightforward. On the bottom layer, we just have a simple color adjustment. On the top, we have some grain to wash out that CG look. But here's the thing with grain. If you look at photos that have noise and grain in them, those noises aren't uniform, and they usually appear in the dark areas of the image. And we can do that by either manually masking, or playing around with the mid-tone and shadow parameters inside the grain effect. And I think that's it. I'm going to make some community asset effects in the future, so be sure to stick around for that. With all that said, thanks for watching, bye, see ya.